Hello AP Statistics students. In this video, we're going to take a look at a sampling distribution again. Shocker. I know. Uh, but this time, the difference of two means. All right, so again, we're going to take a sampling distribution of a mean, another sampling distribution of a mean, and we're going to combine them. This will look exactly like it did for proportions and for random variables last semester. So it's a long process, I know, but hopefully it's familiar and we can get faster and faster at it. So first, the big ideas again, shape. If you have a normal distribution and you add or subtract a normal distribution, the result is a normal distribution, just like last time. To find the center of this combination, you can simply add or subtract the means, the middle. So that's what we're going to do to find the center of our combination. We are going to subtract the means. The spread. Again, you cannot add and subtract the standard deviations. That's not how it works. Instead, you have to add the variances. Okay, and again, we always add the variances because when you combine two distributions, the result will have more variability. It will be more spread out. So the variability has to get bigger, the standard deviation has to get bigger, and so we add the variances. All right, let's take a look at an example so we can see how this works. So again, suppose there are two large high schools, Edison and Sunnyside. The amount of time students spent doing homework over the weekend follows a heavily right skewed distribution with the mean of 170 minutes and a standard deviation of 35 minutes. At Sunnyside, the time students spent doing homework over the same weekend follows a normal distribution with a mean of 160 and a standard deviation of 15. So again, we've got two populations, two population distributions. They don't even have the same shape. One of them is heavily right skewed and the other one is normal. They have their own means, they have their own standard deviations. We're gonna be sampling from both of them and then combining our sample statistics. So Bolt takes an SRS of 50 students at Edison and records the average. So X bar sub E. The average time those students spend doing homework. Mr. Schneider at Sunnyside does the same for a sample of 15 students and records that average, X bar sub S. To compare our results, we will take X bar sub E minus X bar sub S and make a sampling distribution. So first we got to take a look at the sampling distribution for Edison. Then we got to take a look at the sampling distribution for Sunnyside. And then we got to combine them. So what is the shape of Edison's uh, sampling distribution? Well, we hope it's normal, right? But we have to show that it's normal. So we have to make sure that the sample size is big enough. So we take a look at the sample size I've got here for Edison, it was 50. So our cutoff point is uh, 30 for this. So if the sample size is greater than 30, we know the sampling size, the, the sampling distribution will be normal. So the sampling distribution for Edison will be normal because we are sampling more than 30 students. All right, our n is equal to 50, which is in fact greater than 30. All right, what's the center of this sampling distribution going to be? So that is going to be mu of x bar the center of all the x bars for Edison. Well, it's simply going to be the center of the population. 
which was, if I come up here, 170 minutes. All right, now our standard deviation. So the standard deviation of all the X bars for Edison will be equal to our sample size, which was 50, I'm oh, sorry, that goes on the bottom. <laughs> our standard deviation for Edison, I forgot what it was, 35, there it is. 35 is our population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Remember last time we saw larger samples mean a smaller standard deviation. And so we divide by the square root of 50. Do that on our calculator. 35 divided by the square root of 50 is 4.949. Now, we did a standard deviation, right? Which means we got to tip our hat to the fact that we are assuming that we are sampling less than 10% of our population. That our SRS of 50 is less than 10% of the population. But again, don't just say the population what population of all Edison students. All right, we're looking at only Edison students for this one, and 50 is nowhere, is nowhere near 10% of Edison student population. So that's a pretty safe assumption there, isn't it? All right, we got it described for Edison. Now it's time to describe Sunnyside's. All right, so what is the shape of Sunnyside's distribution? Now you might think, whoa, bolt, 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 bolt. Uh, 15, our simple random samples of 15, that is not bigger than 30. All right, that won't be normal necessarily. Ah, except that it says that the population distribution, the population distribution was already normal. All right, so if the population was already normal, then the sampling distribution will be normal no matter what. So, the sampling distribution for Sunnyside will be normal because the population distribution was normal. All right, so we don't need the sample size um, cutoff point because we knew the population was already normal. So those samples are allowed to be smaller. All right, now what is the mean here? So the mean of all the X bars for Sunnyside is equal to, well, the population center, which was, I believe, 160 minutes. And the standard deviation of all the X bars for Sunnyside is equal to, so we're gonna take their standard deviation, which I think was 15, right? Yep, that standard deviation was 15. Divided by the sample size, which I guess also happens to be 15. That's coincidence, right? Type that into the calculator. What do we get? 15 divided by the square root of 15 is 3.873. All right, again, tip our hat to the 10%. I'm, I think, I don't know if we even have to call this an assumption, but our SRS of 15 is less, definitely less than 10% of the population of Sunnyside. All right, that's why we can do that standard deviation because we are not sampling with replacement. All right, again, this is to make the independence clause um, satisfied. All right, now it's time to combine them, isn't it? So the combined sampling distribution. So to compare these, we're gonna do Edison minus Sunnyside. The order here oftentimes doesn't matter. If you wanted to do Sunnyside minus Edison, you certainly could. Um, that sometimes changes the way you do an analysis question, 
but it's st it still works. So the, the order here oftentimes doesn't matter. It just then determines how you will answer and how you will type things into your calculator later. All right, so what is the shape? Okay, so the shape of this sampling distribution. Um, oh, come on, line that up a bit. All right. The shape of the sampling distribution for, I'm going to copy and paste that. will be normal because the sampling distributions for this one, I'll just type that in, x bar e and x bar s are both normal. All right, the center. So the center will be what is the average of x bar e minus x bar s. Well, we simply subtract those, right? That will simply be 170 minus 160, so this center should be at 10. And the standard deviation, the, sta uh, the spread, the standard deviation of x bar sub e minus x bar sub s is equal to, all right, now here's the one we gotta do some calculations, right? Because we cannot simply add or subtract the standard deviation, we have to add the variance. So I have so the variance of x bar sub e minus x bar sub s is equal to. I'm going to take the two standard deviations, square them to get the variance. So 4.949, square it, and the other one 3.873, square it. Then at the end we're going to square root the whole thing, right? I'll just put that square root in right now, right now. And then we'll have our answer. So 4.949 squared plus, and then we square root that answer, 6.28. All right, I'm hoping that process makes some sense. Um, you can add the variances of the two distributions and then go back to our standard deviation. Now, I, I wanna show you a different way to do that, uh, kind of a different way. For me, that's the way that makes more sense. Step by step, the concept is you add the variances. But I do wanna show you what you will see on the AP test on the equation sheet. Because when you look at the equation sheet for the AP test, you might be like, whoa, that's not what Bolt taught me. They are the same, though. All right, so I'm going to come over to the equation sheet. So I'm here at the sampling distributions for means. That's what we're doing for two populations. So the standard deviation formula is right here. And you might look at that and be like, Bolt, that's a little bit different than what you just showed. It doesn't look like what we did. It is, it's just been simplified algebraically. I'm not gonna do that algebraic simplification. I don't, I don't think that would help. But what formulas oftentimes do is they start from the beginning. They don't use middle steps. And so this equation doesn't look exactly like ours because it's not using the middle steps of these sampling distribution standard deviations. This equation on the AP sheet goes all the way back to the beginning, and it uses the standard deviation of the population, the 15 minutes, and the standard deviation of this population, the 35 minutes, okay? It goes all the way back to the beginning. And so if we plug in the 15 and the 35, that's how this formula works. So it would be the square root 
So the population standard deviation for the first um, population was 35. Then they tell us to square it. Then they tell us to divide by the sample size of the first population, which was 50. Plus, now the standard deviation of the second population, which was 15. They then tell us to square it, which, yes, that is the variance of the population. Divide by the sample size for the second population. Um, that was 15. And so if you plug this into your calculator, you will get the exact same answer. All right. I'm not a huge fan of big formulas like that, that you don't really know where the numbers come from. But if you're like, well, come on, man, that's easier, then feel free to use it. So there's the inside of the square root. And then we oh, you take 39.5, 39.49, basically the same as our previous. If we square root it, we get 6.284, 6.28, same number. So if the formula makes more sense to you, um, again, feel free to Google search um, the AP stats formula. Just remember that these standard deviations right here, see how they don't have as many subscripts as ours do? Those are the standard deviations of the population, not the sampling distributions, not of X bars. All right, I feel like I should at least mention that. All right, let's do some analysis real quick. What is the probability that Mr. Bolt's and Mr. Schneider's sam samples show that Sunnyside students averaged more time doing their homework? This means that X bar sub E minus X bar sub S is negative. Now we know in the population, Edison's average is higher than Sunnyside's, but sampling variability there might be a chance that Sunnyside's is actually higher than Edison's. What is that probability? So that is simply a normal CDF, right? I'm going to write our, our statistics over here. So the, the average of our sampling distribution here is x bar sub e minus x bar sub s um, was 10, right? And the standard deviation of x bar sub e minus x bar sub s was equal to 6.28, I think it was. Yep. So again, that gives us a normal model. I want to know the chances of this being negative. So again, if you visualize this normal model, the center is here at 10. Then we would add then we would subtract, right? I want to know the probability that this is negative. Well, negative means we're on the other side of zero. So zero is somewhere over here. I don't exactly know where. I'm not actually adding the numbers. But I want to know the probability that we are on the left. The negatives are on the left. So hopefully that helps you with your boundaries. A lot of people say, boy, I don't know the boundaries. I think the picture will help you with the boundaries. I really do. So this will be normal CDF. where the mean is equal to 10, the standard deviation is equal to 6.28. The lower, well, we're going to the left forever, right? So that will be a negative really big number, like negative 1,000. The upper is zero. Type that into our calculator here. So let's see, we've got 10, no, nope. My lower is neg like negative a thousand. Right. Lower first. Upper. Now the average. Now the standard deviation. A uh, five point five percent. All right. So. There is a 5.5% chance that that quantity is negative, which means the sample average 
time doing homework from Sunnyside was greater than the average, I remember dealing with averages now, not proportions, than the average from Edison. All right, so yeah, don't use the word proportion here. We're not doing proportions. We are doing averages. The average from Sunnyside sample is greater than the average from Edison's. There's a 5.5% chance. All right, so suppose this actually happened. So x bar minus x bar here for Edison and Sunnyside is a negative number. Does this give us convincing evidence that the original population parameters are wrong? All right, so again, if this actually happened, does that make us doubt the foundation that our math was based upon? Yeah, this, this was a little closer or a little smaller than I thought. I thought it was going to be bigger. But uh, a 5.5% chance, it's small, but it could happen, right? I mean, it's not that small. It's not so unbelievable. Um, and so I would say probably not this time. It doesn't give us convincing evidence. It's a long shot, but this could happen because of sampling variability, all right? So this does not give us convincing evidence that the population parameters are wrong because there is a 5.5% chance that the sample average from Sunnyside is greater than the sample average from Edison. This could happen because of sample variability. All right, it could. Now, it's a slim chance, I'll give you that, but I don't think that's low enough to give us convincing evidence to reject the population parameters we were given. I think you want a much smaller percent chance to really reject the beginning. All right, I'm hoping that makes some sense, everybody. Stop on by office hours sometime. If it doesn't, 